Hey, it's me again. I'm here at Adams Point, and today I'm going to be doing my next episode about the famous bird of America, the bald eagle. Now, they're called bald eagles because of their white heads. Look, makes them look bald from a distance, but they're not bald at all. And the ones that we usually think of that are black and white are the mature adults. The juveniles are brown, and bald eagles are really large. They have a wingspan nine feet wide, and there's many different types of eagles. And the bald eagle and the golden eagle are about the same size and can both fly about the same speed. But the largest eagle in the world is the harpy eagle. It lives in South America, and it has a wingspan nine feet wide, and it weighs 30 pounds. <laughs> Originally, Benjamin Franklin wanted the wild turkey to be the bird of America, but then the bald eagle was chosen instead, probably because it looks more magnificent, and I actually think in real life, bald eagles eat wild turkeys, and the bald eagle is a predator, whereas the wild turkey isn't, and bald eagles are smarter than wild turkeys. So, I think it made sense that they wanted a predatory bird to be the bird of America instead of a turkey. <laughs> Bald eagles are carnivores, and remember, all carnivorous birds have that hook on the end of their beak called a nail. And Bald eagles are closely related to sea eagles, like the stellar sea eagle, which means bald eagles mostly like to eat fish. And I would imagine a lot of them would come down here, swoop down towards the water looking for fish, and they'd grab the fish in their talons. And because this is brackish water, I would imagine that, that that means they can eat fish from both fresh water and salt water. And a long time ago, me and my family were driving up to Washington, D.C., we stopped by this lake, we saw a bald eagle on the shore that had just caught a fish and it was eating it. And it was pretty cool. Seeing a bald eagle in the wild, that was amazing. Like a lot of bird of prey, bald eagles can see things two miles away. That's ten times farther than we can, which means they can see ten times better than we can. And the reason why is because they have ten times more eye cones in their eyes than we do. And that's why when someone can see really well, we say they have an eagle eye. I certainly have an eagle eye, but it's believed that Tyrannosaurus rex had the best eyesight of any animal that ever lived. It was even more eagle eye than an eagle. That myth from Jurassic Park that T-Rex's vision was based on movement is not true. T-Rex had three-dimensional eyesight, 100% binocular vision, and it could see things four miles away, twice as far as bird of prey, and 20 times farther than humans. They have better acute vision than eagles and hawks, so staying still in front of a T-Rex will not save you, because they can still see you. Eagles are the strongest birds in the world. They can hunt prey four times their size, and they can also carry four times their body weight with their talon feet, especially the African crowned eagle. So that means that a 30-pound harpy eagle can hunt 120-pound animals and lift 120 pounds off the ground with its feet. By comparison, there's a type of cargo plane I've heard of. I can't remember what it's called, but I have heard that it can carry 50 tons, but that's only two-thirds of its weight. And the largest eagle that ever lived, which was probably also the strongest eagle that ever lived, which, which would also make it the strongest bird that ever lived, was an ancestor of the harpy eagle called the Hass Eagle. The Hass Eagle lived in New Zealand a thousand years ago, and it was the top predator of all New Zealand at its time. Its wingspan was 10 feet wide, and it weighed 50 pounds. It's called the Hass Eagle because it was extremely fast, and the female was twice as heavy as a bowling ball and twice as heavy as the male. <laughs> And they had talons the size of tiger claws. And just to let you know, tigers have five-inch claws. 
And how fast was the Hass Eagle? 50 miles an hour. And the Hass Eagle hunted the flightless MOA. And the Hass Eagle could actually take down prey 20 times its size and carry 20 times its body weight with its feet. That means a 50 pound Hass Eagle could hunt half ton animals and carry half a ton off the ground with its feet. And there are these two legendary monsters that I've been kind of fascinated with that are half eagle. There's the griffin, like the one from Spider Wicko, whatever that movie's called. Um, that's half eagle and half lion. There's also the offspring of the griffin called the hippogriff. Half eagle, half horse. Now the griffin has the front end of an eagle and the back end of a lion. And the hippogriff has the front end of an eagle on the back end of a horse. Buckbeak from Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban was a hippogriff. To create a hippogriff, they had they had to breed a um, a male griffin with a female horse. And that's kind of interesting because what if you created something that was half griffin and half hippogriff? Basically, a third eagle, a third lion, and a third horse. It could have the head and wings of an eagle, the front legs of a lion, and the back end, back legs, and tail of a horse. And we could call it a hippo griffin. Once again, thanks for watching, and once again, see you next time on another episode of Ben's Wild Adventure.